In this video, I'm going to cover the definition, measurement, and functions of money. Why do we use money? It, well, if we didn't have money, we'd be forced to use some sort of a barter system to get the goods and services that we'd want. And there are problems with us. First of all, traders would have to have exactly what the other person wanted. And this could be problematic if the goods that you want to use to trade are unable to be split. We define money as anything that's generally accepted as payment for goods and services. Money is not the same as wealth or income. Commodity money refers to something that performs the function of money and has an intrinsic value. So for example, gold or silver. Fiat money is something that serves as money, but has no other value or use. So the paper, currency, or coins that you carry around in your wallet or your purse. There are three functions of money a medium of exchange, so we use money to buy goods and services, a unit of account or a measure of value, so money measures the value of all goods and services, and also we use it as a store of value. Money allows us to store purchasing power for the future. And here's a practice question, and the answer is C. And another practice question, and the answer is B. What backs the money supply? There is no longer a gold standard. Money's values comes from our belief that it is valuable. So what makes money effective is that it's generally accepted. Money must be scarce. Money has to be portable and dividable. And the purchasing power of money is the amount of goods and services that a unit of money can buy. Inflation will decrease the purchasing power of money, and hyperinflation decreases the acceptability. Liquidity refers to the ease with which an asset can be accessed and used as a medium of exchange. The M1 classification of money is the highest liquidity. So that refers to the currency that's in circulation. So the coins or paper money that we're carrying around refers to checkable bank deposits, our checking account or demand accounts. Also traveler's checks are included in this. The M2 classification of money includes everything that we just um, outlined in M1, but also includes money that we have in our savings deposits, money that we might have in what we call a certificate of deposit or a CD, and money that we might hold in money market funds. The M1 and M2 money often earn very little interest. So the opportunity cost of holding liquid money is the interest that you could be earning. Here's a practice question, and the answer is A.